Hey, 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 welcome back to the Life at Disney podcast, Disney College Program mini series. I'm Holly. And I'm Destiny. And we are so excited and also a little bit sad because this is the last episode of the season. I know, time is flying. This is crazy. There's like so much going on this year. So, do you have any plans? Ooh, um, okay, I feel like I need to spend more time on property at the Walt Disney World Resort. Okay. Epcot yeah. is my go-to, all of the festivals there. Do you have a favorite one? I do like Flower and Garden because of the butterfly walkthrough. It's my favorite, I have to get it every time. Yeah, it's Disney princess vibes in there, right? For sure. I'm like, I'm living my fantasy, my moment. How about you? Ooh, okay, one of my goals is to go to one of the seasonal celebrations. Oh. So either Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party okay. or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Okay, if so, you had to choose, which one? Oh my gosh, maybe Christmas. Okay, yeah. I like that, yeah. You're Holly. Christmas girl. Yeah, You're the Holly. I know, it's fitting, right? Uh-huh, I love it. Yeah, okay, but side note, that's not so much of a side note. <laughs> you know who is like an expert on all of the happenings around Walt Disney World? I feel like I know exactly who you're talking about. I know, we're on the same wavelength. Mm-hmm. Our guest today, who do we have? Today, we have the Walt Disney World ambassadors, Serena and Shannon. I am so excited to meet them. I'm hyped. Me too. Okay, let's not waste time. Yeah. Let's just get into it. Let's do it. Let's bring them in. Well, welcome to the show, Shannon and Serena. We are so excited to have you both here. Yes, thank you for having us. We're so excited. Shannon and Serena are the 2024-2025 Walt Disney World Ambassadors, and they are both Disney College Program alumni. Serena started in 2016 working at the Crystal Palace in Magic Kingdom. Meanwhile, Shannon did two college programs. In 2012, she was at Disneyland Resort working in parking and transportation. And in 2014, she worked at Mission Space at Epcot. Yes. So welcome. Did you choose to go. Thank you. <laughs> coast to coast. Coast to coast. Ooh. Slay. Okay, so <laughs> before we get into everything you did on your college program, how you got here, I think people might want to know a little bit about what you're doing now. So like, what does a Walt Disney World ambassador do? That is a great question. And we do so many things. So we always like to tie it back to the purpose, why the ambassador program exists, what the heritage is of it. And the ambassador program actually started with Walt Disney himself. Uh, Disneyland was celebrating its 10th anniversary and the company was getting a whole lot of attention. We were still releasing movies in the studios Mm -hmm. um, and there was still a lot to do and Walt couldn't be everywhere at once, right? So they had this wonderful idea to elect an ambassador among the cast members. Um, to really represent our cast and to be an extension of Walt when he couldn't be present, whether that was hosting government officials, celebrities, special guests, or just being out in the community and sharing about the Disney company and Disneyland itself. So that's the the roots of it. And then I'll pass it off to you to kind of take us. Yeah. So from the 10 year anniversary to now, we still have the Disney ambassador program at all of our respected Disney parks. Alani, Paris, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Tokyo. There is a team of ambassadors who are there to support, of course, our cast members. Like we do here at Walt Disney World. We support all 80,000 plus cast members at Walt Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, Vero Beach, and Hilton Head. Wow. It's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I got this pen. I got this badge. Um, But we also are out there in the community giving back with volunteer and philanthropic work and also representing the company and all we do. Wow. So that just makes the job look different all the time, every day, every week. Mm -hmm. But that's what makes it fun. And we're just out here spending time with our cast and all the amazing community members that make magic out in the central Orlando area, central Florida. That's so cool. And honestly, we're so happy to have you here. I know we were like already talking about this. I already <laughs> introduced you guys, but like your personalities are like just so much fun. I just feel like I could sit here with you for like 17 hours. Let's okay. go. And let's come talk. Yeah. yeah. And let's yeah. go. Don't make it so comfortable. We have three hours for this, say. but um, you guys aren't busy right now. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not for you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I love that, though. I think that just shows, like, how many doors have been open and possibilities mm. that you probably never anticipated, right, when you first started your college programs or started your careers and your journey. So that's really exciting to hear, and we're so excited to see all that your adventures have in store for you this year. Thank you, Queens. Yeah, appreciate cool. it. Us, too. Yeah, <laughs> Queens. Well, I appreciate you talking about endless possibilities. I'm going to put my traditions cap on real quick okay. um, because we, we – we talk about endless possibilities in the orientation of traditions, but I think being a CP, I really got the feel of what those possibilities could be because never did 
a dream of entering into the world of human resource. Like I was a comms major. Um, so when I got to Disney and I learned about recruitment and HR, I got a passion for it. And that just opened a variety of other doors that led me to, throughout my Disney career and to be here today with Serena and all of you. So truly endless possibilities are here at Disney. I yeah. love that. Okay, so take us take us all the way back to the beginning the because I mean, you have come so far in the company, but when you started on the college program, first of all, how did you even hear about the college program? <laughs> <laughs> Not the evil lab. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, as Shannon knows, too, as we've gotten to have these talks, I love sharing this story because I'm so grateful that I had the parents and the support system that I had because any interest that I had growing up, whether it was in art or in music, anything, it was, you can do that for Disney. You can be an animator for Disney. You can be a musician for Disney. It was, it was whatever it was, we could relay it back to the thing that I loved and brought me joy. So I kind of always had that voice in the back of my head. And so fast forward to 10 years old in fifth grade. I am dialing up to the internet to play on DisneyChannel.com. And I just had a moment where I was like, I love Disney. I really want to work for Disney someday. I wonder what jobs they have for Disney. I'm going to Google it. <laughs> and so I Google it and I find the Disney College program. Um, so at the time, I mean, I was young enough, too, where I wasn't in the kind of environment where I really would have been exposed to that or had known anybody that would have done it. And I knew in that moment, you know, I had always planned to continue my education, but then that created a new goal of like, when I get to college, that's my aspiration is to do the Disney college program. So that's how I discovered it. And how did you come across it? Yeah, I mean, we talked about, first off, I love that you come from a supportive family, because I do as well, whether it was with arts, karate, I'm a brown belt. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I went to work for Disney in a different capacity growing up. We talked earlier about being a band geek, and I was a huge band geek in high school. So I thought that if I was going to work for Disney, it would be in the capacity of music. Um, but I heard about the Disney College program through my brother. My older brother did his first CP out here at Walt Disney World in 2009, over at Pirates. Um, <laughs> and I remember my mom being like, what are you doing? Like you're taking time out of school to go work for Disney. She wasn't understanding, neither was I. I was in high school. I was like, live your best life, bro, bye. <laughs> um, but he came back and he was just raving about his experience of working for Disney and the leadership there and the friends that he made there. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna put that in the back of my mind for future, maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure. Flash forward to my junior year in college, I was going out for criminal justice, poli sci, was going to be a lawyer, change the system. Um, and I just needed a break. I was like, listen, <laughs> I need a break from school. I'm almost about to graduate. Let me look into this Disney college program. Applied for Disneyland because I wasn't ready to leave the nest. I'm from Bakersfield, California. So Disneyland was my home before Walt Disney World. And I applied and I did the phone screen, the web um, interview. I'm not sure if that's the little thing. And then I got my <laughs> notification. Yeah, scratch that. I did the interview. And yeah. the web screen. And the web screen. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, no. <laughs> but I did the interview process for the college program. And then I got the notification that I had been accepted into Disneyland's college program into attractions. And I was like, look at me. I'm going to live in my brother's footsteps. I was so excited. And then I read a little bit further and it said parking and transportation. <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, um, I'm not going to lie. This is my truth. When I first saw that, I was like, I don't want to do parking. Like, where's the magic behind that? And I remember calling my brother and I was like, Lauren, this is what I got. I got parking. I don't know if I want to give up six months to go work in a parking lot for Disney. And I will never forget what he told me because I've held it into every single role I've ever pursued with Disney. And he said that your role is what you make of it. Absolutely. So if you want to go over there and have a terrible time, that's on you. But if you want to go out there and make the most of your experience and gain the knowledge and friendship and leadership that I did, then that's on you as well. And I went out there and not only did I get incredible calves, <laughs> um, but I also had a great time on that team. And it was probably the best team I've ever worked on at Disneyland. I'm the only team I can say that. Um, but I had a great time and that's what pursued me to want to go out again. But this time at Walt Disney World two years later. Yeah. And just want to build off of what Shannon said, because that's something that we love when we get the opportunity to share with whether it's program participants or just other cast members. I think it's very natural that you would come and especially if you're so excited to work for a company like Disney, mm -hmm. you can't help but have an idea in your head of what your ideal role would be or mm -hmm. and you you share that in the interview like these are what I have the skills for, this is what I hope to do. And so even if it's a great area, if it's not exactly what you have in mind, it can be 
an adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, but we love sharing that no matter where you end up, I mean, we all have an opportunity to make an impact and make magic in our mm -hmm. roles. So I'm sure we'll get get love to that, that more. Yeah, <laughs> love period, that. Though. yeah. Okay, so I'm curious because I mean, you obviously have been in all of these different roles, and I think you get a different set of skills in each of the roles. What did you learn on your college program that prepared you for this role? I think it really builds off of the conversation we were just having. I, the college program specifically, because we have plenty of internship opportunities where you can explore different roles, but speaking specifically to the college program, I think it's so important if you have the opportunity to start there to just try and see if that's where you can start your Disney career because you're going to end up somewhere in the operation. Mm -hmm. And like Shannon was saying, we most recently came from backstage roles um, and have spent many years in backstage roles. And for me, I loved the guest interaction. I loved being with cast members and creating that magic firsthand and being able to see that. I think when we see and why we know our cast members need magic back so much is because some of our fellow cast members that don't get that operations experience, it's not to say that they don't make amazing magic like the rest of us, but it can be harder right. to know when you haven't witnessed the impact mm -hmm. that it makes on a guest day. And to really see, okay, when I when I do this, it creates this joy and I've just made someone stay. When you're more removed from that process, it can be harder to remember how your role, how your day to day, because to you, that's every day that's your average. Mm -hmm. And when you start in ops, it's just a little bit easier to recall that. And yeah. to know, OK, so for me, working in the sourcing area, um, we would purchase from suppliers different things that we use throughout our parks and resorts. If I'm writing contracts and purchasing things, you know, normal and just thinking about like, oh, yeah, it's my job. Am I really making a difference? I think about, OK, we're purchasing the food that our guests sit down and enjoy mm -hmm. and eat mm -hmm. where they spend time together and rave about how much they love the food at Disney. Like you just, yeah. you're able to recall that. Mm -hmm. so. Let's go. No, I mean, we learned so many transferable skills every, from day one of our college program, even to our professional internships and into our more professional careers. I think for me personally, it was definitely guest service that I've taken with me from Disneyland over here to Walt Disney World, but also communications and networking and relationship building, like hand in hand. Um, and again, that's just progressed in every single role. I get better and better and I and I like polish off those skills. Um, coming from professional recruitment, it was all about relationship. It's not just a candidate who's applying to a job. They might be applying to their dream job here at Disney. So how can I give them an amazing candidate experience? Because we are the first cast members technically mm -hmm. that they interact with before they even have a job. Right. Um, but then just honing in on connecting and talking and relationship building and being like, well, I might not be the best suited person for this role, but I remember I talked to Tim or John Smith years ago who's in that area. So let me connect you to him or her and see how we can get you to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So I would say connector or connecting is one of my major superpowers and one of the skill sets that. Just Hiking. some of the things we've learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a handful. And still learning every yeah. day, you mm -hmm. know, even in this role. I We always share. I think when people think, oh, the ambassadors are here, I think they come in and we do. I mean, we love what we do and have a natural affinity to just because we enjoy it. But we always, we never hesitate to tell anybody like we're still, we still have something to learn from any one person about anything. We're Absolutely. all growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we talked about like the impact of the program, what you do now. So let's go back to when you first found out you were accepted. How did you feel and what made you say yes? Well, you already know how I felt with my first one. Um, <laughs> you know, that was just like true emotion that came to mind when I first got my first acceptance. Um, but again, I had a great time with that. So if you flash forward two years, when I got accepted into my Walt Disney World college program, I was so ecstatic. Like I had never been, I've only been to Disney World once, so I didn't really know what to make of this new adventure. But it was so thrilling being away from family for the first time. It's like a, it's like a nervous energy, but like mm -hmm. also excited to see what's to come it's and an what. Yeah, it's my own adventure, too. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of college programs, even when we went to the largest arrival ever, um, back in January, a lot of them were talking about how they were nervous because they're not going to be with their families or their friends and letting them know, like, it's OK. You're going to form your own Disney Ohana, your own Disney family here at Walt Disney World. Um, and also friendships as well. It doesn't just stop here at Disney. It continues even after Disney. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I want to say, like a Thanos 
glove of friendships. <laughs> you, yes. <laughs> you have decided to leave the company, but yet we still keep in contact with each other. We're still talking about like what's going on in Disney news. Are we excited for this upcoming attraction? And then when they're ready to come back, because sometimes they do come back to you, knowing that they have someone here who can advocate for them and support them in that next chapter of their Disney career. I love that. Yeah. I love that. We hear that all the time, like forming friendships that last a lifetime or it's probably one of the cheesiest things they say when you come on your Disney college program like so you will meet your lifelong friends here <laughs> but then you do I met my best friend on my Disney college program and I went to college with her brother and he was my friend first and I was like oh my gosh talk about the reaction right he was one of the first people I told I was like Mitch I got in the Disney college program and he was like no way my sister did too maybe you'll be friends and I was like yeah sure <laughs> And you're like, if we're not, if we're doing totally different roles, like, you know, it's, it's like when you try to like blind date friends, you're like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, so then his family came to visit her during our college program and I wanted to see my friend from school. So I met up and the long story short of it is I hit it off with his sister immediately. And then we would FaceTime because we lived in different States. We would FaceTime all after our program and he'd just be in the background, like, Hi. <laughs> remember, remember yeah. me? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> You've been replaced. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's super cool. I feel like I love what you said about, you know, it is really scary sometimes to like, I mean, you moved across the country to move any distance away from your family and to go on this new adventure. Um, what was that like for both of you? And kind of how did you navigate that? Yeah, so for me, uh, so I'm from Tucson, Arizona, and I went to school in Tucson, Arizona, very similar, um, stayed close to home, close to family. And so that was a big change for me as well. I never once second guessed or had second thoughts about whether this was an opportunity I wanted to take, um, but still that moment when you're preparing to go or like that night before, is very, very nerve wracking, especially for someone like me who's very close with my family. Mm -hmm. And even if you have an adventurous spirit, when that's all you know, it's a big deal. So um, it was a very big change, but once I was here, it just was, you know, this, I knew this was exactly where I needed to be, leaned in fully. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not to say that any amount of time being away from your loved ones isn't difficult, but especially if you're not doing an extension, your program's only around four months. Mm -hmm. And I just kept in mind that this was a great opportunity and hopefully I was going to continue my Disney cast life. But if this was it, this was it. You never know what's going to happen in life. So just wanted to lean in fully and make the most of it. And that time flies. It goes by so, so fast. fast, so fast, man. I mean, I like to not compare mine because I would never, but I think about Walt Disney and how he traveled out to California with a suitcase and a dream. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I thought about coming to Walt Disney World from coast to coast. And I remember I was originally going to travel cross country by myself with my, I didn't come with just a suitcase. No, you can't do that. No. I have suitcases, yeah. plural. <laughs> um, but my little, my sorority little last minute pulled through and she actually drove with me. Wow. So we decorated my car. And I still have pictures. I'll show y'all later. And it was like a crown on the driver's seat, like Princess Shannon going to Walt Disney World. That's cute. And my story sisters did that to me as a send off. I was like, you're on your way. And I had no idea. I did not have the mindset to stay at Walt Disney World because even today it's like, why did not you go to Disneyland, Burbank, Glendale? And I was like, I don't know. Like Walt Disney World was calling me. Like I felt like Moana and Disney World was my ocean. <laughs> the magic um, is calling. The if magic you will. is calling. Girl. Calling. Calling. Hello. Girl. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was I was so excited. And then when you get here, it's just all the nerves just like washed yeah. off because you're starting to like see others who are in the same seat that you are that who are also nervous and excited. And then you have the welcome events. You're able to network with your peers and then the leadership that's over at Flamingo Crossing now as well. Like we come from bits away days. So <laughs> Flamingo Crossing, y'all have it made. I'm just saying that. <laughs> And that's all we'll say about that. That's all we'll say about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the, I mean, still, when I go visit home now, and I've been living here for five years now, and oh, that goodbye moment is still always emotional and very difficult. But then you come back and you're like, this is where I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. It's like your purpose, your why. Like, you know your family's at home. You know that you're doing it for them and for yourself ultimately, too. But knowing that your why is cheering you on and like supporting you back at home oh, is helpful. 
they get tempted to come visit as much as possible too. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. My yeah. nieces, I think that's why I'm their favorite auntie. I said it here live. Um, <laughs> because I do work for Disney. So they say, oh, like Auntie Shannon, Mickey Mouse. I'm like, yeah, come on over. Let's go. Team. Yeah. <laughs> I have a batch too. <laughs> you have that too. Maybe yeah, I news. do. Yeah, you're I've just been... like automatically the coolest family member. Yeah, when you work for Disney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait. Okay. I just realized. So we we all four of us came from across the country. Um, because I'm from Seattle. You're from California. You're from California. You're from Arizona. I've been holding it. <laughs> Not yeah, be talking been about this, Destiny. Yeah. You're burying the lead. Yeah. It's a grand reveal. Yeah, sorry. Did I take that yeah. moment from you? No, no, no. Oh, you can say it. You can oh say it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but, like, what made you guys decide to stay out here? Like, we are across the country. What is your why? What kept you here? Um, I mean, my why... I have a different wife for different reasons in different areas of my life, but my wife right here in Walt Disney World is probably due to the connections that I made here and the networks and the relationships that I built during my college program in 2014. You know, at the time, again, like I wasn't planning on staying out here in Orlando because the humidity in the summertime Mm -hmm. is not for your girl. Um, But I formed relationships and I landed a Disney internship during after my college program, and then that led to a full time status position. And then time just flies by so fast here at Disney. But just with Orlando and Disney already having the inclusive key, the diversity with our cast here at Walt Disney World. I love going to Epcot and seeing the different faces and learning about the different cultures. But that's just scattered all throughout Central Orlando through Disney. So my why is our cast and the relationships and networks that I built here. And it's all being West Coast girlies. Um, I think for me, my family was not a we go to Disney every summer like it wasn't a normal vacation I went about a handful of times throughout my childhood and it was really special Um, I did visit Walt Disney World before my college program um, but just a just a couple times where you're still really like there's so much to do I'm just gonna enjoy it and I'm along for the ride (laughs) Um, but that was a big part of that decision of just what was familiar to me and wanting to continue exploring you know growing up that was always like Disney World wow (laughs) commercials man (laughs) so um the magic called me and that was why I chose Walt Disney World for my college program um but then exactly like you said once you're here I mean you build those connections you form that family and that's what makes you want to come back um I this is really like silly um not silly but never after I finished my college program I had so many dreams where I would just dream about going back to Crystal Palace and seeing all my friends I would literally dream about just coming back and seeing all of the cast members that I had made relationships with and so that definitely I think had a huge part in me wanting to come back here specifically but I also just felt like endless possibilities, Mm -hmm. we're such a large property. I think for starting your career, you kind of know, you know where you can start, you know what skills you have, but the sky's really the limit at any of our properties. But I knew if I came here, I would just have so much to explore and find my way and those doors would really show themselves to me. Um, So yeah, that's why why I pursued it here, why I stayed. Um, And I'm always, always open to any new adventures that would present themselves to me but right now Walt Disney World's home love it love it (laughs) I think that just exemplifies like the company is so big right we have so much to offer so many things to do but there's so much community within too absolutely yes we always say this it's like it big Walt Disney World small Disney community Yes. It, it is a small world yeah. after all. You just have to say it. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. But there's today. no Here's other way it. to say it. It's a cliche <laughs> for a reason. That's the end of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of night. <laughs> Big world, small community. It's so yeah. true yeah. because you work here long enough and you make these connections and everyone, you, you could form a bond with someone that's been a 10-year cast member mm. that knows a 30-year cast member that's worked in these many departments and it's we always say it's less than six degrees of separation. It's like two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, totally. Um, I feel like you guys must be professionals, obviously, because that was like a perfect segue <laughs> into kind of the next question that we have, which is how did you go from your Disney college program to the next step? What was that transition like? It is so hard to leave once you're on your college program. And I'm so happy that we have the opportunity to extend when we're here. I 
I chose not to extend because I wanted, I knew, coming was very validating for me. I knew I wanted to work for Disney and I never really questioned that, but there's still, you kind of ground yourself in being like, okay, you know, this has been my dream all growing up and it could be everything I hope it to be and more. Thankfully it was. Or you know what, I could go and realize that I love experiencing the Disney magic, but maybe it's not my career path. So I really let, gave myself the grace to be open to it not being exactly what I had in mind. It was though, and it was so difficult not to extend, but because I loved it so much, I was like, okay, I'm gonna wrap it up now so I can get back to school. And the sooner I finish school, the sooner I can apply to a Disney internship and come back. Um, so that, that was my reason for going back sooner. So then transitioning into applying and then embarking on my Disney internship um, was really wonderful because I had established, again, that foundation of the family that I was returning to from my college program. Um, but they really, with these programs, they really set it up for you to be able to find your community and to make friends. You go through traditions with a lot of the people that you'll be working in related areas. So I found it to be, even though it was a kind of another fresh start, a very seamless. They really set it up for you to find a home and a family. And I found that with the housing. I found it with all of our onboarding boarding. And so I would say it was exciting, but definitely it was like starting new again. That was a great answer, and I loved hearing your story and how you transitioned it to your Disney internship after your college program. I kind of had a different experience when I pursued my Disney internship. So at the time, I was applying for roles that aligned with my communications degree. So internal communications, external communications, and guest relations, because my brother had did his internship there. So me being the baby sister, I wanted to do it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, obviously, as you obviously, should. as you should, yes. And here I am thinking, like, I applied to three roles. I'm going to get at least one of them. Uh -uh. I didn't get <laughs> not one. I got no longer in consideration. And I was kind of bummed, you know, I was like, man, like, how, how am I going to continue on my Disney career here? What I thought I was going to do. And I was like, you know what? I can stay in operations. I can become a coordinator that can lead into leadership and just continue on that way. And it was one day I was sitting over at Vista Way in our um, education center and a leadership came up to me. She said, hey, Shannon, would you mind sitting in on a panel and just talking about your Disney college program experience? And I said, yeah. Am I going to take a day off? She's like, no, just come be yourself and talk about your experience on the Disney college program. I said, say less. So I get to a panel and there's about 12 other um, participants with me. And we're just sharing our story about how it is living at Vista Way, working at Mission Space, working for Disney, learning the transferable skills to lead into our career. And it was a really fun experience. Again, not thinking anything of it. And then after the panel ended, I had two individuals come up to me and they handed me their business cards. And it turned out to be Christy and Lisa from Campus Recruitment and they handed me their business cards just saying we want to connect with you. Let's set up some time. And I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> CP Shannon had no idea who these ladies were. Like, I didn't know they were the VP and director. So when I came in for my meeting greet, to this day, my recruiter and now best friend Randy, he judged me by how I, how I dressed. <laughs> so Chrissy said, come you, and- You followed the assignment. I did. I sure did. As a California girl, you see business casual, jeans were okay, and a nice blouse. And that's how I showed up. Um, and Randy's like, Shannon, you came to see a VP dressed like that? And I did, and I looked cute. <laughs> um, and after that experience talking to Christy, it led me to receive a Disney internship. And all of this transpired within, I'm gonna say less than 48 hours. Wow. After I was done with Christy, I got a phone call from Randy at telling me that they would like me to pursue their, their internship. And I said, okay, so I interviewed with him, then I interviewed with the leader, and then I'm like literally beating my face to go into work. Like I'm going to Mission Space, costumes on. <laughs> I get a phone call from Randy. He's like, hey, Shannon, like we just want to make an offer for your Disney internship. And me, Shannon CP, I was like, you know what? Let me think about this. <laughs> I, had no, I had no idea coming from operations. <laughs> yeah, but I was just, just in her jeans. I like, was, <laughs> let me think about it. But you have to think about this too, because coming from operations, like I didn't know what office and technical was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea, like a computer and office work, that did not really interest me when I had an opportunity to be in the operations and be at Epcot every day with our guests. So I did. I asked for 24 hours to let me think about it. And I talked to my brother, because, you know, he, he got me into Disney. He's been my guiding star. And he said, I would go for it, Shannon. Like, you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. 
So I called Randy back and I accepted that role. And that led me to receive a full-time status role after my internship was over in HR. That's where I've been ever since my ambassadorship. So truly saying yes to opportunities when they present themselves for you and networking and relationship building. Yep. I'm going to be a huge advocate for that for our college program participants. Well, it's such a demonstration of we are a relationship-based company. Yeah. And every, everything you said, saying yes to opportunities and diving in and really fostering those connections. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one's one experience looks the same as someone else's. And although I applied to my professional internship and was fortunate enough to get accepted that way, that was still a product of a lot of support I got from folks that were oh, still absolutely. here mm -hmm. at Walt Disney World. And so you have to make those connections with your leaders. And, and when someone offers to help you and puts their hand out like that, you have to believe them and let them do that for you yes. because they want to help. We all want to see each other succeed. So when you've got leadership like we do here that take an interest in you mm -hmm. or even just your peers. Yes. Um, I mean, I was calling my old leader from Crystal Palace all the time during the application process because they also kind of know what do we look for in resumes? What do the resumes look like that we tend to gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. And so I got all of that advice and, and I used those resources to make sure that I was prepared and I was set up for success. So no one relationship is more valuable than another. And the relationships that you form here and the connections and the support mm -hmm. is all valuable. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like how you tied it into peers too. So going off how you talked about leadership supporting, I had a lot of su support, yes, from my leadership, but also from my peers. And my peers that I've gained through my Disney career has also allotted me opportunities that I never would have thought of. Like through traditions, I was able to land um, a little cross you with Adventures by Disney um, by doing the Yuletide Fantasy Tour every holiday season. And then from that opportunity, I was able to land an opportunity with some of our other production teams here at Disney. And I went from being just in B-roll footage to actually being on camera talent. And of course, I've always wanted to pursue this role as an ambassador since my first college program in 2012. But I think every step of the way, I was very intentional on how I gained those skills mm -hmm. by watching what the ambassadors did. So though I had leadership support, I was getting more hands-on experience by being in front of the camera. But those are my peers doing that for me and like saying, like, this is where you want to go. How can I get you there? Let me also help you on your journey. Because yeah, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so much of it comes from just coming in, gaining the experience, making the connections and walking through the door saying walking yes. Walking through the doors. Mm -hmm. And you went through those doors, I feel like, and then now you share that information with, I mean, with us, with everyone you encounter, too, so. We're like Cusco. Booyah! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 Boom, baby! Boom, baby! Cusco! I love the IP tie-ins. Yeah! Shameless Disney plug. plug. Always. Disney hit it. What is it? Exclusively on Disney Plus? Exclusively on Disney Plus. <laughs> right into the camera, baby. <laughs> it's always so interesting to, like, ask people what they Disney story is, especially if they've been with the company for, you know, a number of years, because everyone's story is so different. It could be like, I was dreaming about coming back to, it came to me in a dream and I applied <laughs> and I got the role. Or it's like, I was on this panel that someone asked me to do and the opportunity was like, it's always so interesting. Um, and I think what's really great about our college program participants is they are are hungry for these opportunities. And that's part of the reason why they're here. Um, and I think, you know, you both are absolutely right. This is a relation based com relationship based company. You know, these opportunities are going to be there for you. Doors are going to be open. You just have to walk through. Um, but, you know, for people who are like, OK, but but how do I get started? How do I find those doors? What advice do you have for them? Go for it. I was just going to say, be willing to ask the questions, mm -hmm. because, again, coming back to that concept of you don't know what you don't know, if you're motivated enough and inspired enough, you you will get there. You will get to the answers that you need. But if you don't know where to start using your peers and your leadership to say, you know, I've been thinking about this and I think this is an area that I'm interested in or even. I went to a learning opportunity at Flamingo Crossings and mm -hmm. this person went to speak. I wasn't able to connect with them there, but I would really like an opportunity to connect with them and learn more about it. How do I find their information or are you able to connect me with them? It's putting yourself out there to know that asking questions is completely OK and we have the support to get you there. 
And especially at Flamingo Crossings. Oh yeah, like going like that leadership team out there, the education team, like they are allowing the, the yeah. Shout out to y'all. Shout out former ambassador Ali, who's now with the Flamingo <laughs> Crossings team. She will definitely help you get ready to go. <laughs> but they're able to see the participants are able to see more of the diverse roles that we have here at Disney, all due to the education team. And we talked about how we wish we had that on our program because we knew operations because we were working the operations. But to have like WDI come out and talk about yeah. what they're doing or leadership like Jeff. He went out there a few weeks ago and had a leadership course with the participants. And hearing it from the horse's mouth is next level experience for them to gain. Um, to echo Serena, yes and, I love improv, yes and. Um, <laughs> ask the questions, don't be afraid. But two things, oh, I, I would say say yes to opportunities. No matter if you know what it's about, what's going on, because you never know where that opportunity will lead you to, to make that next connection, to make that next step in your career. Um, but also joining some of our business employee resource groups or our mm -hmm. BERGs. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about, again, CP Shannon had new, no idea what a BERG was. But if you're looking to gain experience and network at the same time, a BERG is a perfect place to go. Like I am part of Pol I'm part of Pride. I'm an ally in Ola. Um, also, so our when yeah, when yeah. so, but it allows you to connect with various individuals in the operations, no matter their operation or executive level roles as well. You talked a little bit about the Bergs. Can you explain a little bit what those are, and are our college program participants available to join these Bergs? Yeah, absolutely. So here at Disney. Company culture is extremely important to us. Inclusivity, representation, and feeling like we all are seen, heard, and, and have a community behind us. So our business employee resource groups, when you enter the corporate world at most companies, we have these um, these groups and these programs to help us find our community. So whether that's for the black community, the Hispanic community, uh, we mentioned WIN, which is our women's network. Um, there are a range of different ones that you can join either as a member of that community, an ally or supporter of that community. And the great thing about them is, again, company culture and finding your people and your family. It only connects you with more people that care about the things that you care about also making company connections that will help you find your path here. But it's also a great way to learn about each other. Mm. And to answer the second part of your question, yes, college program participants and Disney interns can join a Berg. As soon as they get their blue ID, they can go on to Disney Cast Life and search for more information on how to join. That's awesome. Yeah. Love that. Thank you for sharing that information with us. So, okay. For anyone listening, amazing. <laughs> this is the future. You could be the next Walt Disney World. I'm holding This could be you. <laughs> this could be you. Insert image. <laughs> so now everyone out there is like, okay, I'm sold. I'm excited. I've heard both of your amazing stories. I want to come be on the Disney College program. I have 8 million questions now. First, Orlando, Florida. <laughs> what is it like? Like, is there anything to do outside of the Disney bubble? Because I feel like, and we've talked about this on the show, there is so much to do at Disney. Walt Disney World Resort is massive. What about outside of Disney? Well, it took me a second to actually step outside of the Disney bubble um, during my college program because I was new to the area. And so Disney was like my safe house. Like I know Disney. I'm comfortable with Disney being a Disney kid. Um, but as I started to explore more of the central Orlando and central Florida area, I got this sense of community within mm -hmm. Orlando that kind of reminded me of my hometown. Like for me, I love going to farmer's markets in Bakersfield, California, and knowing that they had multiple of them out here in central Florida, whether it's on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday afternoon. Um, but I'm also a theater kid. So my minor in college was theater and I did improv seven times. Wow. So going to the comedy club downtown or going to Dr. Phillips to see a musical that's mm -hmm. traveling around. Um, beaches are also a really big hit. because have many that are near us. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a little one hour drive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Florida life. Love but it. yeah, I mean, and just coming back to the downtown area where the comedy clubs are at and all those things, um, we, Lake Eula Park is beautiful. Ooh, just yes. take a stroll. We have so many good. Uh, Orlando is a foodie hub. Love you talk food. about oh. diversity oh. and the culture down here. Mm -hmm. we, there's so much to explore if you're a foodie like we are. Personally, my favorite place outside of the Disney bubble is downtown Winter Garden. Yes. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with the Orlando area or have yet to move out here, it's it 
pretty close proximity to Disney-ish. It's one of our surrounding um, areas. And they just have their own, they have their own farmer's market, mm-hmm. but they have this whole strip of restaurants and we have a brewery. It's super dog friendly. Mm-hmm. I have a fur baby. We both have fur babies. We can definitely get to that. We can get to that later. Yeah, for we sure. We have ambassador dogs and one ambassador oh, cat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I got my puppy too, I just wanted to, everywhere I went, I wanted to take her with me. And so I'd gotten familiar with downtown Winter Garden prior, but especially mm-hmm. during those times when we could be out in the open and outside because she was a COVID puppy. Um, mm-hmm. I always took her with me because it was a super dog friendly area and we go to the farmer's markets. So my perfect day is going down there, taking Ruby to the farmer's market, just yes. reading a book, meeting people. It's vibes. And go to the open mm-hmm. mic night in the evening. Yeah. yeah. I think we both started doing this after our college program because I was nervous to leave. Like, yes. I found my safe bubble being Disney. They didn't have a car. But what's really cool <laughs> is that, too. That'll do it. I had a car. I was still in bubble. But even at Flamingo Crossing, they allow the participants to go and explore the beaches and go kayaking and ice skating and have an opportunity to get to see what Florida and Central Florida has to offer them. So if any participants are listening, please say yes to those opportunities so you can go outside of Disney and see what more there is to offer here in Central Florida. It shouldn't surprise me me about our incredible programs yeah. team. I just didn't know about that. Yeah. And shout out to our programs team because they've Another always worked out. so hard. <laughs> <laughs> they've Can always have a tally for you? <laughs> how many shout outs do you give? <laughs> uh, shout outs and millennial references. Yes. <laughs> hey, you know. um, but they've always done such an amazing job of making sure that this experience on your program mm-hmm. is the best that it can be and that you have the resources afforded to you. But of course, now with Flamingo Crossings and having everything so centralized and having it be more of a defined program of educational offerings, Mm -hmm. recreational offerings. I mean, that is just something that that wasn't as formed as it was when we were on our college program. So to know that that's available to them now, I mean, thank goodness we found our way. We were we're going to no matter what, (laughs) (laughs) because we're determined. (laughs) Um, But to have those resources so readily available again, take take the resources that are afforded to you. All right. Well, you guys already know how this goes. It is the last episode. Save the best for last. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Our first question comes from Maggie, who asks, are there any cool perks cast members get when they are on the program? Okay. First off, hi, Maggie. Yeah. Yes. There are so many cool perks. <laughs> Where do you work in the college program, <laughs> right? One of them being, of course, being a guest in the parks. Mm -hmm. So not only will you get the opportunity to make magic for our guests, but you can also experience the magic as a guest yourself. And one of my favorite perks, just being a cast member in CP, is actually also the backstage opportunities that we have for backstage yes. magic. So being able to see the attractions behind the scenes and like how it operates. I know sometimes I'll go in early morning before the park opens and go climb F- Everest, Mount Everest wow. over at Disney's Animal Kingdom and see how that attraction operates or Haunted Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was such an experience for me because you're actually like seeing the library and the footprints and like just oh being gosh. in the room where it happens. It's so yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's so innovative. So Even innovative. now. Awesome. Yeah. We love our cast. Heart, heart eyes, heart hands. Heart eyes. Um, <laughs> all right, Destiny, do you want to take the second question? Yeah, let's do it. So our next question is from Amanda. And Amanda is going into a field not related to the Disney College program. So she wants to know how does the DCP set you up for your future career? Man, we know about that. We sure do know about that. (laughs) I mean, career wise, you know, you might not be going into a position in the college program that's going to get you to that career that you want to be in right now. But there's so many transferable skills that you can learn. We touched on some earlier when it came to communications, networking, relationship building. But let's just like hone in on the life skills as well that I learned. Because, Mm -hmm. again, it was my first time leaving home when I did my college program out here at Walt Disney World. So I learned about um, budgeting. I so learned about know. self-care. <laughs> but, girl, uh, balling Listen. on the budget, I still embrace it. I wish I could say I learned about budgeting. <laughs> but budgeting and time management as well. So I know during my CP, I love going to the parks. I think a lot of the CPs do. It's a beautiful perk. So how can I balance out closing down Epcot Mission Space attractions, but then getting to Magic Kingdom to ride all the attractions before yeah. park closes? Um, so just little tidbits of life skills overall, too. Love that. Yeah. 
Those were incredible answers. Thank you so much for taking the time to just answer some questions that we got. Um, if you guys have a little bit more time, we have one more game we want to play. A little rapid fire, this or that. We always okay. have time for games. And we love this or that. That's a great <laughs> yes. game. Yes. Disney yes. edition. Let's love to hear it. Our favorite edition. <laughs> Ready. Awesome. Game face on. All right, let's get started. We will go with churros or popcorn? Churros. Popcorn. Ooh. Tron light cycle run or Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind? Guardians Cosmic of the Rewind. Galaxy. See Cosmic Rewind. All the way. September is our favorite song to write to. <gasps> Can we tell you why? Yeah, Please. we'd love to know. <laughs> we got our selection news for Ambassador on September 21st. Stop. The 21st night of September, baby. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the stars have aligned. The fate, the universe has spoken. Like, that's crazy. Oh, that song was blasting was in my apartment that night, mm -hmm. dancing with my family. That's, that's actually oh, wild. I was dancing with my dog. <laughs> it was a great time. Aww. Dogs are also family. They are. They are. Thank, yes. you. Thank you for recognizing that. Next question. Table service or quick service? Quick Table service. service. Oh. Okay, Jungle Cruise or Kilimanjaro Safaris? Kilimanjaro Safaris. I love animals. Yeah. I would have to agree. Yeah. The hippos. We love, <laughs> we love our skippers. Ear hat or ear headband? Ear, ear headband. headband. Especially the sparkly ones. Mm -hmm. I'm always drawn to sparkles. Yeah. You can have so much like personality fun with the ear headbands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect accessory for love every it. occasion. Love Wear it outside of Disney. You yeah. won't get weird looks at all. <laughs> In the car. A job interview, anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Shopping spree at Disney Springs or a Disney Resort staycation? Oh. A Disney Resort staycation. Mm. Love that. I love that for you. Oh. And as much as I would love to be in line, I'm going to say, sh say shopping spree at Disney Springs because of all the merchandise that we have out there and brands that we have. And I'm a shoppy girly, so. Yeah, we both are. It's a problem. <laughs> Remember when we talked about budgeting? Yeah. <laughs> and also discounts. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> um, monorail or ferry boat? Monorail. Monorail. Okay. Monorail. For efficiency okay. in your typical park day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ferry boat if it's your first time. Okay. Oh, this is a hard one. Oh, no. Applying for the Disney College program or not applying for the Disney College program? Applying for the Disney College program. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> no brainer. That's even the question. Next. Apply. Next. Apply today. Next. <laughs> there is no next. That's it. Mic drop. We're done. Apply today. <laughs> Thank you. This could be you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, for real though, that is the last question. That is all we have time for today. Thank you so, so much again for stopping by and dropping the wisdom that you dropped. I was taking notes in my mind um, and we we're just so happy to have you here. We just four thank friends hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for having us and allowing us to go down memory lane and share our experience with the Disney College program and Disney internships. It's been a treasure this moment has been. Okay, well, now I am going to go cry because that is a wrap on season three. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in and we will see you next season.